So welcome to another PNT T Talks. I'm Eduardo from Paper and Tea. And, and as I said, as I mentioned before, today we are talking about a tea that a lot of people have been waiting for. Uh, tea Talks usually, they only last 15 minutes. And I have to say, this is not enough time to actually talk about the tea that we're going to try today. Today we're talking about matcha, okay? So I will introduce to you our Shinto matcha, which is our ceremonial grade uh, matcha is like for, it's for, um, matcha is a very special tea, it has become very very popular, there is a whole sort of trend around matcha, about drinking matcha, mostly because of the uh, benefits it has, it is recognized as one, probably one of the teas with the highest antioxidant content, and today I'll explain you why. So we will talk about matcha a little bit and we will also sort of come up with the preparation which requires different equipment. Uh, let's uh, remember this tea, we don't infuse it, okay? So we whisk it. So we need a couple of other things for this. So just for you to know, matcha is a Japanese variety. So it's a Japanese tea. The real origin is actually Chinese because Chinese, uh, the, uh, the Chinese they basically invented everything sort of tea related and then it has been adopted by different countries so the, the technique of grinding tea and whisking it actually started in China around the, ninth, the 10th century so during the Song Dynasty and they developed this technique that eventually disappeared in China they started infusing teas, that's what we do right now, we infuse teas uh, and then this is the time when Japan started really, really getting into tea. So they developed actually the whole tea ceremony around a grinded tea. This is matcha. This is a tea that is actually used in the tea ceremony. So uh, let me show you how it looks like for those of you who don't know. It's a powder. Okay? So we've actually grinded the leaves completely. And what's interesting about matcha is that uh, we've, already talk, uh, we've already talked about how there are uh, there is a whole category within Japanese green teas that is called shaded teas. So these are teas that before we harvest them, we cover the whole tea plantation in order to increase the, uh, the content of chlorophyll so we can enhance a few flavors, okay? Uh, so, uh, for example, umami. And uh, we have a higher content of caffeine, we have a higher content of alkaline, so we have different really, really nice things happening when we do this shading process. And matcha is actually one of the teas that is shaded the most. So it's about five weeks uh, that we shade. So it ha it's very, very rich. Uh, not just that, what we actually do when we pluck the leaves, we take off all the stems and the veins of the leaves. Okay, so we just have the leaves and that's what we eventually we grind. Okay, so it takes, it, it has, there is a lot of effort put in producing matcha. Uh, that's why actually matcha, it's pretty expensive. A lot of people, they are always trying to find like a good option, like a cheap op option for matcha. That's actually unfortunately not going to happen because matcha is a tea that requires a lot of different different things done um, compared to other Japanese green teas. So this actually increases the value and then of course uh, the grinding it uh, uh, and all that, it makes it a little bit more special, okay? So um, that's a quick introduction. As I said, uh, with matcha, we could be talking about it for hours, all the, the ceremonial context within. Um, but uh, I also want you to learn to brew it, okay? So that's what we're going to, to do today. We have the matcha, we will talk about matcha in the future, but it's basically this tea that has been shaded for uh, about five weeks. And then we pluck it, we take off the stems, we take off the veins, so we just have the leaves and then we grind it into this powder, okay? So how do we brew it? We actually, we use this equipment to prepare it. We don't brew it, as I said, we whisk it. So we have, uh, here I have some utensils. So I have, here I have my chawan. So this is like a bowl. So chawan, it's what I'm gonna use for the matcha. So I'm holding it like this, so you can kind of see how, how it fits in your hands. Um, there are different materials, you can find stoneware, porcelain, um, uh, yeah, it will be up to you. Um, then, uh, what's also very important, this is a chashaku, so it's a bamboo spoon, okay? And it has like this scoop here, and this is what I'm going to use to measure the tea, okay, when I put it here. 
Then I also here have a strainer because I'm gonna sift the tea. I want to make sure since it's powder, sometimes it clogs. So I wanna make sure it's really, really fine so I have a very creamy and a very, um, a very nice texture when we, when we whisk the matcha. And then something that is super, super important, you can use a spoon for this. You cannot use a spoon or fork. You actually, you need a whisk. So a bamboo whisk, you can also, if, if you don't want to get too ceremonial with this, there is like electronic uh, whiskers that could also work. But if you want to go traditional, this is what we use. Uh, here um, I have a chasen. So this is a bamboo whisk. I put it here in this uh, glass with hot water. We usually we do that because bamboo is very flexible. So when it's dry, it's very rigid. So we want to um, warm it up a little bit so it's more flexible and it doesn't break when I whisk it okay so I put it here just a few like just before I start to pour the water so it's already uh, getting a little bit more flexible and that's all we need okay so first um, the amount of tea that we use are about two of these chachakus so two scoops full okay so two two full scoops big scoops it will also depend uh, on you. Um, if you're new to matcha, I won't recommend you to use a lot, a lot of uh, tea. You can just start with one scoop and then go up um, because it might be uh, very intense. So uh, here, as you can see, I'll just um, I'll just sift to to get, as I said, a very, very, very fine tea. So we we the there. So this way we make sure there are no like these bowls or clogs of tea and then we get a very homogenous and very creamy and basically the idea behind matcha is all these tea particles uh, they are in suspension. So actually we, we brew a very small portion and we drink it uh, right away. Okay, so uh, with the, that's why we need, we don't stir it, we whisk it because we need all these particles to go in suspension. So with a, with a bamboo whisk, it's very easy to do that. Okay, so I just, I, I sift it all and I'm going to put this away. So, uh, and then I can, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you like, can you see? There you go, there's a matcha, like all the powder and it's very fine. And so usually if you're, if you're new to brewing matcha, um, it requires a technique, it requires a lot of practice. So if you like it, just prepare it, prepare it, prepare it. What I usually recommend is I add a little water uh, at the beginning. So to make it more homogenous and easier to, so then we just, we use our chasen and then we make sort of like a paste. So it's like pasty looking. Uh, you can see, can you see there? So it's like kind of like a paste. I'm not doing the, the whole thing right away. And then I'm going to add the water. We usually we add about two fingers. So it's like about 70 milliliters. Usually the shape of the tawan of the ball will tell you. Actually, there is always kind of like a rim kind of thing that I put that it's what you use. And then you just, what you do is you whisk very fast. Okay. So it's for a few seconds and then it's kind of like you're doing like sort of like an M or a W with it and then you just whisk it, whisk it, whisk it and then you slow sort of slow down a little bit and then you also make sure you get a nice foam so it has to like get like this kind of foamy thing and that's what you eventually so it's super easy some people actually say um oh matcha that sounds so complicated and you need so many things it took me actually nothing just a few minutes uh, a few seconds you just uh, uh, make sure your 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 tea is very fine and then water whisk it and then you go and so let me let me try mm. So the idea of a matcha is that it's, um, this one has like these fruity notes, it's kind of like sweet, it has this umami as well, so it's the, like very nice sweetness, and it's very creamy, the texture is different from a tea, so because this is, as I said, it's not just an infusion, I didn't just transfer compounds, I'm eating the tea. 
So all the tea, this powder, when I whisk it, I put it in suspension, so it's everywhere in the water, so this is what I feel. So it's thicker, it's a little like heavier, and it's sort of creamy, okay? That's one of like, the, the, a very, very nice texture of the matcha. And as I said, due to the shading process, due to the fact that there are no stems, no veins, it's like 100% leaf, it's what has everything. And because I eat it all, I don't just extract whatever I can, I just, I'm eating everything that is in the leaf, it is considered one of the most, like one of the healthiest teas ever, because it has a very, very, very high concentration of antioxidants, okay? And this is also, um, for me, matcha is also very, uh, there is a very nice relation with the tea ceremony, so it's, this kind of uh, becomes, I think, someone's, personal tea ritual. If you do this, like some people, I know some people do this in the morning, they would just go and then have the, this time of the day to just prepare their matcha. It doesn't have to be like a super rigorous and strict uh, ceremony itself, uh, but just the fact of brewing, it has a lot of mindfulness and like this special moment, beside the tea itself, uh, itself fills you with like energy, it has a high concentration of caffeine as well. So it's like a good bust. Like a good kick. So let's go. I'm gonna keep enjoying my matcha. You cannot refuse this <laughs> for obvious reasons, okay? But but eventually it will all go inside of you. Um, I'll go ahead. I bet I bet there might be quite a few matcha questions around. Uh, by the way, our matcha comes from uh, Kagoshima, so it comes from the south of Japan, from Kyushu Island, which is a very um, it's not the biggest region, but it's it's. A very it's gaining a lot of popularity all, mostly because of the the kind of soil you can find in Kagoshima of course there are volcanoes everywhere in Japan <laughs> of course but the, the the area where the tea plant plantations are are very very close to to the gar to the volcano so actually they, sometimes they have to clean up the ashes from the from the tea trees before they start plucking okay so let's go ahead and let's see if you have any doubts uh, have you um, do you like matcha have you tried matcha did you think this was super super um, hard to do so uh, we have Taekwondo out here uh, Nalani Tram wants me to marry her okay <laughs> that's a weird proposal Tea Room Stories, uh, Wawa Wali, welcome. We have Navia, hola Navia, um, Wawa Wali, hello from Taiwan, ni hao. Um, Navia, uh, Sumancha, uh, you're here. Uh, I'm, I know you, you can't prepare matcha right now. We were talking before, so we're super happy we're doing matcha today, but here I am. So Navia Elkanin, well, uh, that's one of the things we find in matcha. Matcha is a tea, um, well, all tea has two very important compounds. These are all the antioxidants and vitamins and minerals. Uh, we always said tea has caffeine and tea has alkanine, which are two compounds. Caffeine tends to, to give us a lot of energy, to keep us awake. And then alkanine helps us focus and calms us down. So there is like this balance within, within these two uh, different compounds. In a way, I always feel like um, tea knows, like sort of reads you. Like if you need energy and you're like down and then you drink some tea, it will give you energy. And if you are like super like hype or active and then you, you drink some tea, it will calm you down because of these two compounds that you find there. So uh, actually the shading process increases both compounds. So matcha makes a really good uh, option if you want to study, if you want to be concentrated, if you want to be in that state of uh, awakeness and alert uh, without being super, super, it's not like having coffee, okay? But like, it's, uh, of course, also the caffeine levels are lower than the coffee, but it doesn't give you that, that excitement, okay? So uh, Sandra loves matcha. Um, does matcha have a high caffeine content? Yes, Kirtna. Uh, it does, it does have a, a high caffeine content, also because once again we're eating it, so it all goes inside of us, so all the, con imagine that we, if we're infusing we're extracting, and of course there will be things we won't extract from the leaf, we won't extract everything, but here we're eating it, so we are 100% 100 sure that everything was, that was in the leaves, it's inside of organism, so yes, it has a high concentration of everything. 
That's a lovely kettle. Yes, this is my uh, tea fellow kettle. <laughs> you can find it in our website and it's actually very nice. Especially for these kind of teas like matcha or when you're using gaiwans or small teapot because of the 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 neck here uh, it, it allows you to really control the pouring of the water. I love to have my matcha in the morning. I actually have seen a lot of people um, doing like matcha shots. If you don't want to do like this ritual of preparing it and the chawan and the chasan and all the, and the whisk and all that uh, some people actually have like instead of having an espresso shot, like they would have a matcha shot, which it's it, it's actually very nice. Uh, I join with my matcha here. Oh, Sandra is actually having some matcha. I'm starting to appreciate matcha. Both don't have a whisk or matcha bowl yet. Yeah, well, it, it's uh, you can start a little bit. I mean, if you see this, of course, chawans like traditional chawans, they can get very expensive. There are some like this is our. Um, Sizable, um, I think it's around 30 or 40 euros. I'm, I'm not quite sure. You would have to look it up on the website. But then if you're starting with matcha, you can also use like a cereal bowl. There are a lot of cereal bowls that you can find in Ikea or any other place. They are super cheap and they sort of have the shape. Um, and then the whisk, it would be kind of like what you, it's not so easy because as I said, you can steer it with a spoon, you cannot steer with a fork. You actually you need all these different sticks that will put these old particles in suspension and you will be able to enjoy the tea. So at least this is something you should have. This costs like 15 euros. So if you if you like um if you if you want to get into matcha, it's it's a good way. And then you can start uh, if you become addicted, then you'll probably will want to have like a very nice uh chawan or all the other the other accessories, of course. Um, as it is a product that is used in a ceremony, there are a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of equipments that have been developed and for of a really, really high quality. So, um, I wonder if there is any other last question about matcha. Um, I guess I don't see any, any other question coming up, popping up. But, uh, well, we have more than one matcha. There are different qualities. Uh, today I brew, uh, this is kind of like the daily matcha. This is what I would drink pure every day. Maybe I would also add like a little milk to it. You can have like a matcha latte. And then we also have a matcha that is from a lower quality, also Japanese. Um, even China is doing matcha right now, which is of low, lower quality. And also because uh, sometimes we do want, we don't need the best, best matcha because one, we can add milk to it. So we just want the flavor. And also because matcha has become very popular with cooking. So you can do like matcha cupcakes or matcha, all sorts, all things matcha actually. <laughs> you can bake whatever you want, add a little matcha. So for that kind of thing, you don't want to find a super nice, expensive, uh, fine matcha, okay? You, wanna, uh, you want to have something um, a little lower quality because you don't need something extremely good to put it on the oven, right? So, um, and then we also have a very a high grade ceremonial matcha, which we will probably be tasting one of these days and make a little bit more of a difference between the, the why we can get these different qualities. Um, which quality will you recommend to start? Um, for example, our Shinto matcha, it, it even comes, we have a starting kit, so it even comes with that. That's the best way you can start. I wouldn't go for the cooking to, to brew it, to prepare it like that, because then sometimes people, the first time they have matcha is not a really good matcha, so then you, you get a very bad experience. So try to get at least something good, uh, not the worst, bad, the worst matcha ever, and also, no, not the most expensive one, because probably you won't be there yet to actually appreciate it. But if you just get like a regular matcha, uh, like a daily matcha, so it's a matcha that you can actually drink every day. That's, that's, that's going to be your bowl of your everyday bowl. That, that's good enough. Okay, so I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope if you've never had matcha, I hope you, you do. It's another of those must teas that you have to try once in your lifetime, of course, if you're a tea lover. So uh, I hope to see you around tomorrow. Um, this week we're talking about herbals uh, in our social media. So from tomorrow I'm starting a herbal marathon. We'll be drinking herbals for five days in a row. Okay, so I'll enjoy this tea while I can. Oh, nice. Okay. 
So I'll see you tomorrow. Take care and uh, drink good tea. Bye.